Hi everybody, welcome to Byte Ventures, where we deep dive into the marvels of technology. In today's case study, we'll discuss about hyperlog log. So hyperlog log is a probabilistic data structure that is used to find the cardinality of a set. In other words, it is used to find the number of unique elements in huge record set with very minimal footprints. For example, some implementations like we will see in our last part of the lecture that the Redis implementation claims that it can find the number of unique elements in one billion record set with just using 12 kilobytes of memory. That's pretty dope. Yes, it is. So let's see how it works internally and what are the learnings from this. So the first, we'll discuss about the problem statement. The problem statement is that suppose we are opening up a new website or a new e-commerce store and we want to find the number of unique visitors visiting our website, right? So the counting of unique users visiting a website is a big pain point. We don't want to go with the aggregation of records like daily um, aggregation or hourly aggregations, but we want to still count the unique users. The second thing we want to take into consideration is we don't want to use a lot of memory. We don't want our memory to be growing in a linear fashion. That means if the user grow in a linear fashion, the memory grows as well. We want some optimizations on that front. So this kind of problem that we are dealing are called the cardinality estimation problem. Okay, so when we think of this, probably every one of us came from a data structure background having learned this. So when someone throws this problem that find the number of unique elements in a huge set, the first thing that comes to mind is a hash map or a hash table, right? So what exactly is a hash table or a hash map? So it is a key value store uh, which helps us in keeping the count of what things are already visited or what are not visited yet. So in this case, uh, we'll have our own key value store where the key stores the user ID of that and the value stores how many times the user visited the website in that particular time frame that we're considering, right? For example, the user ID A visited the website for four times during the time frame. user ID B visited for thrice, uh, user ID C visited just once, and the user ID D visited 10 times, right? So when someone asks us, what is the total unique users that visited the website in that time frame, you'd say the key dot size or four in this case, because A, B, C, and D are four users uniquely in that time frame. So what exactly is the problem with this? So if we use a hash table kind of thing, then when that number grows from a 1 million or 1 billion, the memory footprint is just huge. For example, let's say each hash table record takes n bytes of memory, okay? Whatever it is like four bytes for this, two bytes of this, four bytes of this, four bytes of this, whatever. Let's say the number is n, right? So for 1 million records, that boils down to 1 million into n. In other words, it will be n MB. Just to identify unique users, if the unique users are in terms of a million. What if that's a billion, which is of, of orders of magnitude of 10 to the power 9? So this memory requirement go, will go to n GB. So we are just consuming n gigabytes of memory just to spit out a single number, which is the number of unique users visiting the website. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, that means it doesn't sound a very sane solution though, right? Like wasting so much memory just to find out. And the second thing that comes into consideration is like when we're dealing with millions and billions of records, we don't need the exact number, right? So we can use some kind of approximation algorithm to reach there. And that is what hyperlog log does. Okay, let's go back to a very trivial coin toss experiment where we keep on tossing the coin um, until it reaches tail, right? So as we know that a coin has two sides, a head and a tail. Uh, we have an H and T representing the same. And we stop the experiment. And based on the string that we receive, like each run will be having a bunch of H uh, ending with a T, of course, because once we reach a T, we stop the experiment, right? So we have a bunch of runs and based on these runs, we say that, okay, we'll estimate the number of runs the user have gone through to have reached that, okay? So let's say the first run, uh, the user got um, tail at the third throw. And the second run, the user got tail at a second throw. In the third run, user got tail at a fourth throw. It can happen that the user got tail in the 
first through itself and you stop the experiment, right? So let's say this is an nth run we have. That means uh, someone gave us to us uh, that we have hhht as a string that is generated and he or she is claiming what is the number of runs that one must have to go through on an average to get this string. It's a very interesting problem, right? And pretty simple one. So let's go back in the world of probability and combinatorics to see that how things are. So to get h in the first place, we are considering a fair coin. That means the chances of getting a head and a tail is 50%, both, <laughs> not like any other chances. So the chances of getting a head in the first place is one by two because um, chance of getting head exactly this is one out of two possible options that we have. Similarly, head in the second place is one upon two, head upon uh, one upon two in the third place for head in the third place. And similarly for tail in the fourth place, we have one upon two, which boils down to one upon 16. That means on an average, if we consider, uh, then this will occur once in every 16 cases, right? Of course, it can happen in other ways around, but on an average, if we consider everything is a fair situation, no user gets lucky, then this kind of situation will repeat in every 16 instances. Or in other words, we can say that if L represents, uh, we have the total number of consecutive heads from the beginning is represented by L, then the total number of unique runs that the user must have gone through is 2 to the power l plus 1 in this case l is 3 so we have got 60 right that makes a very viable option so how it is 16 there are some other use case that explains that like for example the user must have got t hd hhd hd and so on and eventually the user must have got hhd to get to this and this is a very idealistic scenario Okay, let's take another example. So let's go back to our initial problem statement that we want to find unique users visiting our website, right? So let's say there are like four um, users, Alex, Ben, Charlotte, and David. And these are the four users that are visiting our new e-commerce website that we created. And we want to count how they are four and without knowing that they're actually four, right? So uh, when we were talking initially, we talked about probabilistic algorithm, right? We are talking about this is a probabilistic algorithm and we should have some kind of randomness so that the possibility of this name should be equal to the possibility of this name. But this isn't looking like that. So what exactly we have to do differently? Yes, you are correct. So we have to use something called as a hash function. So if we use a hash function and our hash function that we use specifically in this case, let's say generate six uh, length binary strings for each of these names that we have. For example, Alex, when passed through a hash function, produces 110011. Ben, passed through a hash function, produces a different string. Charlotte, different string. And a David, a different string. And the beauty of the hash function is that if we pass Alex again, we'll get the same hash string as we got in the first chance. Right? That is very interesting. So that now we have a one-to-one -one correspondence of every name with a binary string that we have. So Alex is mapped to 110011, Ben is mapped to this, and so on and so forth, right? And these strings are now perfectly random because we have chosen a good hash function for that purpose. So now this problem looks like the coin toss problem. So given this string, we have to find the total number of unique users in this case. So what we can say that, okay, let's map it something like this. So let's map all the zeros to head and all the ones to tails. And we go back to the same problem of finding the total number of heads or unique consecutive zeros from the beginning till we hit a one, right? Here, till we hit a one. Here, we don't have anything here. We don't have anything here. It's the exact same thing. Consecutive number of heads before hitting a tail right? The same thing. So here we have zero, here we have zero, here we have two, and here we have one. So the maximum number of uh, consecutive zeros that we encounter in this case is two, right? So similarly, we can say that the total number of users in this case would be two to the power L. Uh, so 
we are taking an assumption of l plus 1 sometimes and l so let's just keep things simple and let's just keep at l here so 2 to the power l here which is the total number of unique users that we'll receive that is l is 2 and that is 4 here right because l is 2 here so this is the algorithm that the Flajoli and Martin proposed it okay so they claim that this is induced to a predictable bias that we have so what they wanted to do they wanted to add a constant to this so they wanted to have the cardinality c as 2 to the power l divided by 5 so they have actually proposed as l plus 1 but for simplicity i'm assuming that it's l and where the constant value of phi is 0.77 in this case so this is the flagellate martin algorithm flagellate martin algorithm and they have proposed it way back and to calculate um, the cardinality of the set okay you must have observed a very unique feature in this so for example let's say there is a single user called alex and that has visited our website the whole time duration that we have encountered for and let's say the hash function that we're using is a different hash function this time and it is spitting out a value of 000101 let's say right so what does that happen? So when we consider this, then we have first three as the unique consecutive zeros beginning from this. So if we go by the previous logic, we have to provide the number of unique users as 2 to the power L divided by 5. So let's keep 5 out of the picture. Let's um, round it up to 2 to the power L, which is equals to 2 to the power 3, which is equals to 8 very wrong right we got a lot deviated from what the actual number is which is in this case is one why is that because we have chosen an exponential function which is 2 to the power x so whenever there is a slight variation of that then the number just grows exponentially and that is also something which these guys have figured it out so they were trying that okay what can we do next so as a normal programmer what you can think that okay this hash function may be a problematic one what if we take multiple hash functions so let's say we have alex here and let's say we have different hash functions this time and all of them are mutually exclusive and we have three hash functions producing three different strings so let's say this is producing 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. And this is probably 101110 and this is 110111 okay so as we're using highly random mutual exclusive hash functions so the likelihood of getting three zeros again in the beginning will be very 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 less right and what we'll do in this case we'll take an average this is three here this is zero here this is zero what is zero the number of consecutive zeros in the beginning of this set right that boils down to three plus zero plus zero by three it is one and when someone says that okay what is the cardinality or what the total number of unique users in this set it will be 2 to the power 1 is 2 which is pretty close right but that is the main problem with this what exactly is the problem finding independent mutual exclusive hash function is very computationally intensive right so we want to go with another approach that solves this and there comes the log log algorithm so instead of finding multiple hash functions, what they want to do is they wanted to categorize into different buckets. For example, let's say we have this four as the Alex, Ben, Charlotte, and David's number that we have calculated way back uh, in a couple of slides before. And this is something they want to use the same trick as, right? So instead of using the whole zero from the beginning, what they want to do is they have calculated see find four buckets here okay they say that okay instead of having to use multiples hash function to solve the outliers let's just say that some part of this uh, some part of this one is used for identifying the bucket and the rest part is used to identify the same set of things that we have it's exactly like finding um, the physical memory from the virtual memory that a cpu does right so as we have four buckets so we'll assign two bits initially to identify the buckets so this a goes here uh, so let's say this is zero one two and three so this is three a goes here uh, b this is one zero one zero is two b goes here zero 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 c goes here 
d is 0 1 okay oh perfect they have been assigned to different buckets awesome uh, we didn't plan it that way but let's just see so now uh the 0 0 1 1 goes to here because that is here 0 0 1 1 uh, we have 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 here we have 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 0 goes here and 0 0 1 1 goes here okay and we'll deal with the same exact problem um, so now that we'll calculate the number of consecutive zeros from the beginning this has 0 this has 2 this has 1 and this has 2 now right so this is 0 this is 2 this is 1 this is 2 again so what is the average it's 2 plus 1 plus 2 divided by 4 which is 2 plus 2 4 plus 1 5 by 4 it's something 1.25 so now it's almost 2 divide 2 to the power of 1.25 which is a little bit less than 4 right because 2 to the power 2 is 4 2 to the power 1 is 2 so it lies between this number okay we got a big estimation so now that this will to some extent solve the case um, of outliers so if we have or if we got the first instant that a lot of zeros then we'll say that okay that's basically a problem so the cardinality in this case is um, m they say the claim as this the formula that they claim is m m is the number of buckets that they have and 2 to the power of l average so l average is this so this is l average in this case divided by phi right so m in this case would be um, 4 um, so this number which is probably let's say 3 or something so it comes down to a little bit more than 4 okay this is an approximate algorithm so in a huge data set this won't matter a lot so this is the new formula that we have for log log algorithm but the main problem is that it still doesn't solve the case for outliers if a lot of them are outliers then it still gives a very weird answer because we still have the average but what if everything comes to a single bucket and everything is zero and then we still go way off the actual thing that is when the super log log algorithm came into the picture so what durand and flagole friend of flagole uh, thought about this time is like okay so what don't we do think a little different this time so what we can do is instead of taking all the things let's just take the least or bottom 70 percent of this okay for example um let's say we have five users right uh, and we have a different uh set of binary hashes for each of these users so let's say we have this and let's say we are considering five length binary string this time mm, then we have zero 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 one we have um zero zero one zero one and one 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 zero zero okay so in this case let's say this is counting three consecutive zeros from the beginning zero consecutive zeros from the beginning four um two and zero right so they're saying instead of taking all of them into account while finding the l average we should take only the 70 percent of the bottom one so we'll reject the higher one so that the chances of rejecting the the ones with outlier probability goes significantly down right so in this case they optimized the algorithm and say that the cardinality on this set is 0.7 m because they're considering 70 percent the bucket length and now the 2 L average for 70% of the people the average that is considered I just uh, don't know how to name it so I'm just naming L of average for 70% like of the people divided by 5 that we have right so this is the new formula that is super log log algorithm describes and it's just one way they described that okay this might help in identifying the outliers and this will help increasing the accuracy or reducing the errors this is very significant because using super log log the error rate which was 1.3 upon root m uh, in case of log log reduced to 1.05 upon root m this time very significant improvement on this algorithm and they have like pretty much impressed with it
But Flajole was still thinking that, okay, this is still okay, but it's still not yet done. And he wanted to have a very foolproof algorithm to that. And that is when he was thinking that, okay, why don't we use harmonic mean to finding the averages? For example, let's say we have four numbers. Let's say we have five, we have 10, we have 20, and let's say we have 25. What is the average in this case? The average in this case would be 5 plus 25 is 30, plus 30 is 60 by 4, um, it's 15, right? 15 for the 60. Okay, this is the normal case. Let's introduce one more outlier. So let's say we have 5, 10, 20, and 1000 probably. So it boils down to 1035 divided by 4. It's boiled down to 4 to the 8, 30. 23, 4, 5 is a 20, almost 4, 5 is a 9, 4, 9 is a 36, almost 259, should be 258 point something. So see, when we have the majority of the numbers in the smaller range, having a very high outlier takes the average still way off, right? And if we took an exponentiation on this, then things just get blown up, right? So what if, what is the advantage of using a harmonic mean? So in this case, let's let's use the harmonic mean. So harmonic mean, what it does is like the total number of elements here and the reciprocal of the elements, one upon five, uh, one upon 10, uh, one upon 20, and one upon 1000, right? It's four upon um, whatever it is. Uh, okay, let me see that again. Okay. We have one upon five is like point, um, 0.2. Plus this is 0.1, this is 5.5, .5, and we have 0 0.001, kind of that, right? So 0 0.2, 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.5, and 0 0.001. So we have 5 to 718, 0 0.801. Let's, for example, let's we can take at 0 0.8, so it will be 4 divided by 0.8, or we can say 4 divided by 8 into 10. 2 is 5, right? So we can say that the average in this case boils down to somewhere near 5. And that is what the harmonic mean is. Like even if we have a bigger number, the average didn't shift that much like here it shifted. This is the whole idea of using the hyperlog thing. So what exactly they wanted to do is use harmonic mean instead of the regular mean that we use to find the average in this case. So for example, uh, using the harmonic mean uh, we can say that the cardinality of the new set can get down to c equals um, m times the harmonic mean of 2 to the power li where li is the longest number of consecutive zeros in each of the buckets divided by phi where phi is as usual 0.77 m is the bucket size as we have so this hyperlog log algorithm improved the improve the accuracy by a lot more. So as we have discussed, uh, the log-log algorithm proposes 1.3 upon square root of m as an error rate. And then we have the super log-log algorithm, which is 1.05 upon root m that we have. And then this hyper log-log algorithm went even further to 1.04 upon root m. And that has been a huge revolution in that industry. So initially, we claimed that certain implementations of hyperlog log can identify unique elements in 1 billion records in very less memory footprint, that is around 12 kilobytes of memory. So let's just see how Redis implements that in its own way. So we understood that the hyperlog log errors is 1.04 upon square root of m, where m is the number of buckets, or here it is registers. So Redis uses 16,384 registers. So the standard error in this case is 0.81%. So now the hash function that we discussed that helps us randomize the string that we are searching for has 64 bit string in this case. So the 64 bit is outputted by the hash function that is used by Redis internally. So as we have 16,384 registers to identify uniquely, we would need 14 bits for that. So out of 64 bit, we spared the 14 bits out of that. So the remaining 50 bits is the length of the string that can be happening, right? So this is the length of a 50 bits string. So now the longest run of zeros we can encounter in this 50 bits is, can be filled with a six bit register. 
because 2 to the power 6 is 64 so we can easily fit in those longest number of zeros in this 6 bit of register so that's why we have a 6 bit register with almost 16000 register so that is 16000 into 6 bit um, dividing by 8 so that it converts this bit to bytes this gives down to almost 12000 bytes uh, and if we divide it by 1024 which almost approximates to 12 kb of memory that is pretty insane right so using just 12 kb of memory finding unique elements with the error percentages of 0.81 percent um, is pretty insane and yes that's all for today guys uh, i hope you liked it uh, i would like you to give some feedback on the video in the comment section um, and furthermore i've attached all the documents uh, that i have read and researched in the description please go through them and let me know if you have any questions i'd love to answer them thank you and see you in the next one